Hello, hello, and thank you for joining me. Today we are going over some book series that I have started and have yet to either catch up or finish on. Now I'm not going to be talking about any of the series that I have read everything that is currently published because those I have caught up with, clearly. And I'm also not mentioning series that I have started in the last year or so but that I am unhauling because I have a little pile of books where I'm debating whether they're going to be unhauled or not so I haven't gone through those either so we're just going to go with these and to be fair I have probably missed a couple on my shelves because as I was doing this last night getting them all ready for today's video I kept finding other ones I was like oh my god yeah I forgot about this one and it's a whole thing so we're just going to talk about these series and some of these I'm actually in two minds whether I'm going to continue so let's just see how this goes. I have noticed that this year I haven't really been continuing any series so hopefully this will spur me into remembering oh I have this series to continue with and maybe I'm going to enjoy it because um, I've read three sequels this year and that's it. <laughs> so I need to get back into reading some series so hopefully this video is going to help with that as well. Let's get straight to it though. So we have a series that I started properly Probably about 10 years ago, if not a bit more. Oh my gosh, actually quite a bit more. And that is Damfair by Barb and JC Hendy. Now this is a really old series and I don't think it's even in print at the minute. Or oh, well, I say it's old, but it might not be old, it just might not be a popular one. And this is all about a half vampire and her elf friend. And they go around to different villages pretending to kill vampires until they actually meet a real one. So that was a lot of fun. But this is one where I read the first book, read a bit of the second book and never continued. And I think I was just a bit too young to appreciate it. So I found these for second hand or on sale in different places so I do want to continue on with this one. I'm going to reread the first one and then continue on. Fingers crossed I'll actually do that at some point this year. We'll see. Then we have another series which again I probably read about 10 plus years ago and this is one where I only read the first book and that is The Way of Shadows by Brent Weeks. Now Brent Weeks is quite a big fantasy author and I haven't read any of his other series. I read this book a while ago and I remember it being quite a brutal one and I feel like again now I would probably appreciate it more than when I was younger and I found this in a charity shop and I also found the third one so I'm gonna reread this first one and then if I like it I will pick up the second one and then continue on and finish this trilogy. I don't remember too much about it because it was such a long time ago I just know we have our main character who becomes an assassin and he has this best friend who gets horribly scarred and so he kind of takes revenge. Again this could be completely wrong because it's been so long since I've read it. But I also think his other series, Something to Do With Light, is meant to be really popular. So I feel like I should reread the one that I started, see if I like it, and if I do like his writing style, I can read his other works. That's the idea. Then we have a series that I believe, yes, I started this year, and that is City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. And I actually really enjoyed this. This is one of her younger books, and I really do want to continue on with this trilogy. I think the third one was published this year, so I am looking forward to getting the second one and continuing on. We're following a main character whose parents are interested in ghosts. We have the father that's all the scientific knowledge behind it, and the mother that does the actual stories. And she can actually see ghosts. So I love it. I think it's really good. This one's set in Edinburgh and it was just so good. I loved the atmosphere. It was a lot of fun to read. I actually listened to this one through audiobook and I have to admit it's something I would physically reread because I loved our main character so much and all the references. And I think the other ones, we have one set in Paris and then another one in New Orleans, I think. So yeah, I am actually looking forward to rereading this one. Not rereading this one. I am actually looking forward to continuing on with this series and it just kind of reminds me that I do need to get this second book, so. And another series that I actually do want to continue on with, which again, the third book was printed this year, I think, or it might have been the end of last year. Honestly, time has no meaning at the moment, but that's Skyward by Brandon Sanderson and this is his younger works and it's a sci-fi and I was actually quite surprised by how much I enjoyed all the characters in this. I shouldn't be surprised because I do like Sanderson's writing, but I was surprised because I don't normally like sci-fi, but I loved this. I really cannot wait to carry on. I've got the second book. My mum even wants to read that because she read this book and really enjoyed it. So that's something that we're both really enjoying. So I need to read that second book because I do own it. It has been on TBR, but I didn't get 
round to it. So I need to get that back on another TBR and then continue on with the third book. Also, I actually really like these covers. They're really nice with all the like gold foiling and then just this sci-fi landscape. I think it works really, really well. So yeah, this is so much fun. We're following a girl whose father was a fighter pilot and he has been declared pretty much a coward and there's loads of things that gone wrong and she refuses to believe it and so she is fighting really hard to become a fighter pilot and prove everybody wrong about her family and everything and then you find out loads of stuff along the way. Honestly there's characters in here Ember and Doomslug. They're so great! I love them. Not everyone can get on with our main character because she is really headstrong. She loves saying all these outlandish comments and it's hilarious and I love it, but I know not everybody does get on with it, but I actually think she's a really good character. And I am really intrigued to see where it goes. We're in this world where humans have escaped to this world because they were being killed off by alien species called Krell, and there's just a whole thing. But I think it's really good. So yeah, again, this is another one where I'm actually really excited to continue with it, and this is reminding me how much I do want to read it, so. Then we have The Falconer by Elizabeth May, and this is an interesting story. It's set in Scotland. It's kind of like steampunk as well which I do like the steampunk vibes I like the atmosphere and setting but I wasn't too keen on the storyline and that is basically we have Faye a girl whose mother was killed by the Faye and she can see them and now sets about getting her revenge the problem that I had is the way it ended I wasn't happy with the way it just ended it was just like a sudden end and I was like that really frustrated me there is obviously another book but I just I don't know because I feel like the only thing that I really liked about this book was the setting and not so much anything else. So this is one that I'm in two minds of whether I'm going to continue. It is good for fans of A Court of Thorns and Roses because it does have that similar vibe and storyline. I, yeah, I don't know. I'm not 100% with this one. I just feel like it wasn't quite for me. So I'm undecided whether I'm going to continue on with this one. If you've read any of this and the second book and if you think it's worth picking up, then I will. But as it currently stands, I'm undecided. Then we have From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout and I've read the first and second book of this but I have yet to get the third book and I have been hesitating because I've heard so many mixed reviews. I really enjoyed this first and second book, I thought it was really good but I can actually say at the time I gave them five stars but the more I think about it I feel like it doesn't quite deserve it. It is a fun read, it is a fast read, it is a fantasy romance and we're following our main character who is a maiden. She has been kept solitary from everyone she's not allowed to interact with people nobody's allowed to touch her or anything and she hates it and tries to rebel against it we're in this world where we have vampires and there's like this whole big thing going on with it she gets this bodyguard and there's a romance and stuff and honestly i did enjoy it i thought this first book was really good i can say the second book i liked not quite as much as this one but i did still enjoy it and i'm a little bit apprehensive about the third one because i have heard nothing but mixed reviews some people love it but the vast majority of people just don't seem to enjoy it so i I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm going to continue with it. I did predict the third one was going to be five stars so I feel like I should read it to fulfill that but I'm also scared. So I don't know. I'm really not sure. Oh uh, we have another one that I'm not sure about and that is Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb and this is the start of the Farseer trilogy and she's done so many books and I was really excited to get into this because it's so hyped up but I was actually really disappointed and this came out as three stars. I just feel like it was really really slow. We're following our main character Fitz who is a bastard child of a prince and he gets disowned. He then is in this really unique position where he's part royalty but also not seen as royalty and so he gets trained up to be be an assassin. We also have different magic and stuff and I feel like even when I'm talking about it I'm like I should have really enjoyed this. This sounds like exactly something that I would like but for some reason I just couldn't get on with it. So I feel like again this is another one where I'm in two minds. I do want to continue with it but I have also heard that the start of all her books are so slow and the second book is massive so I'm not sure. I might see if I can get an audiobook and listen to it and if I like it I'll then pick it up physically and continue on with the series because I'm just I'm not sure I feel like it was the writing style I the story and plot line is something that yes I should really like but I feel like the writing was really really slow and it just didn't hold my interest so that's what I'm a little bit dubious of but I also don't know whether that's just because I was reading this at a time when I wasn't into fantasy fantasy is my main genre or it definitely was at the start of this year but I've been finding that I've been less interested in it so I don't know whether part of it is just due to that so I feel like I'm going to keep hold of this maybe try and find the second one on audiobook or even go to my local library which 
I need to start doing more, just see from there because I feel like otherwise I'm not sure. And I love this cover, I love the style and theme of it all and this should, honestly this has everything that I should love, it just didn't quite deliver. So I think, yeah, we'll see, I don't know. Then we have One of Us is Lion by Karen M. McManus and this is technically a series-ish I want to say, there is a second book but apparently it follows a different cast of characters so I'm not sure whether this would be classed as a series or not but I've chucked it in here just in case. And this is another one where I'm undecided because I've heard so many mixed reviews about the next one which is One of Us is Next. Yeah, I mean I liked this first book, I thought it was an entertaining YA murder mystery but her other books I have heard so so many mixed reviews, especially Bobby from Bobby Sister Pages, she wasn't impressed and that kind of makes me a bit hesitant because I'm like if she didn't like it that's a bit worrying because I normally like the books that she's liked. I kind of trust her opinion and if she's saying it wasn't the best then I don't know. It might be something that if I see on sale somewhere that I pick up and try because I do like a YA murder mystery to break up my reading. I feel like they're just a lot of fun. You can really like just enjoy it and you don't have to pay too much attention to it and stuff so I don't know. Maybe. Okay, then we have another series that I'm actually really enjoying and oh my gosh, Bobby's been at me for ages to try and finish the series because she loves it and they're really short so I don't have an excuse and that is Every Heart of Doy by Sean Maguire which is part of the Wayward Children series and I love it but I have two more books to read so we have the latest one out which is the sixth one and I need to read the fifth one but I do love this series. They're portal fantasies where these children go into different worlds and find exactly where they're meant to belong. And these worlds may not be amazing, they may be a bit brutal and harsh, but it's where they are accepted. I love the fact that each story has a point to it that Sean and Maguire is trying to get across to everyone. Yes, it is done a bit blunt and obvious, but it, they are short stories, you know, they're less than 200 pages. But I do love it. Every single one has made me happy and every single one is either four or five stars. I really, really enjoy this. Now, I do like the layout of these as well because you'll get some which continues on from this and then some which are prequels to this this and I think it works so well. In this one you have a bit of a mystery as well so I like it. It's good. I really do enjoy this and Bobby from Bobby Just Pages, again gonna be mentioned her probably quite a lot and yeah she's read this and loved them all and she's been on at me for months to finish it so I really need to get on and finish this series like they're so quick. Maybe I'll do that in August. Okay then a break from some of the bigger books to talk about some manga and we have Sailor Moon which I loved this series growing up. I used to watch the anime and I loved it. I related so much to our main characters in here. It's just amazing. We literally just have these guardians of different planets that are saving Earth from bad people. That's what it's all about and it's so good. I love it so much. I have been struggling to find these in English though and I know that there are different apps on your phone where you can read manga and stuff but I have to admit I am not an ebook person like I cannot get into them as much so I really just want to own these and read them so yes. I have the first three which I need to read the third one and hopefully I can find these and continue on. I don't know how many I'm going to go into because honestly it's a massive series but I do at least want to continue with the first like season that I remember so yeah really enjoying this. Then we have Arjun the Demi-Human and this is more of a horror manga. We have a lot of body horror in here. Again this is one that I do want to continue on with. It's just manga's rather expensive and this is all about people that can't die. It doesn't happen to everyone and you don't know you're one of them until you die and now there is this like science research where they basically just talk to you and kill you repeatedly in the name of science. So yeah it's it's really interesting, really gruesome. I wouldn't recommend this if you're not into that sort of thing because there are some, um, yeah, gruesome parts in this book, especially with all the artwork and stuff, but I actually quite like it and I do find manga's really good if I'm in a slump and I just want something quick and easy to read and it makes me feel like, yeah, I've actually read something and finished a book in like half hour. That's amazing. Makes me feel good. I actually do really enjoy this. I do want to continue on with it. My partner's read more of it than me because he reads manga on his phone. He really enjoyed this. He said it gets even darker, so I'm just a bit like, Hmm, okay then. So yeah, but I do want to continue on with this one. Then we have Moriarty the Patriot, which is another manga, and this is following Moriarty that we know from Sherlock Holmes, and this is following him as a child and growing up and becoming the mastermind that we meet in the Sherlock Holmes adventure stories. This is really interesting. I really like it. It has a good look at different 
like class divisions in society and how Moriarty is against it and that's why he becomes the villain that he becomes. I thought it was really good, a really interesting take on Moriarty and I do need to get the second one and continue on with it because I actually really did enjoy this. And the final manga that I have started is Tokyo Ghoul and I've read the first two volumes of this and again this is something that as I said manga is just a light fun read for me and I do enjoy this one. This one is basically almost like zombies in a way. We have these people called ghouls and you can't tell they're any different from you until they try and eat you which is quite cool. Our main character gets mixed up with them and I really like it. I think it's a really interesting look because you get to see it from human's point of view and ghoul's point of view and there's this society that's all about trying to keep ghouls in line but it's just there's a lot that goes on. I think it's a really fun one and I've got the first 11 volumes because I managed to pick it up in it for a job lot thing on eBay. So yeah I need to continue on with this one as well. Okay halfway done. Woo! Back to novels. We have The Last Namsara by Christine Cicerelli and this is one that I actually really enjoyed. I didn't think I would because I think the synopsis does not do it justice. We have a main character that's trying to escape from an arranged marriage to this really horrendous person. We are also set in a world where there are dragons and where we have different races of people and one of them's been horribly repressed and there is so much that our main character has been told that turns out isn't true and she finds out about it all and I just think it's honestly really well done. It's kind of like Ember in the Ashes but for me better. Now technically this isn't a series, these are classed as standalones within the same world but they do continue on from each other. It is a trilogy and it's something that I do want to read. They follow different characters but I think it works really well, I really enjoyed this and um, yeah need to continue on with it. Then we have a series which I'm not actually going to continue on with and that's Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. I have read the first three and personally I see it as a trilogy. I know there are more books to it but I really do just see it as a trilogy. I think it wrapped up really nicely. I've also heard, I think it was Bobby, who read the fourth book and did not enjoy it and she just again agreed that it's like the third one is kind of where it's at and it is a bit different because I feel like the fourth one, again this I could have this slightly wrong but it follows in a way different people like it moves on from where it is I, personally I just think he should have left it as a trilogy so I'm not going to carry on with this one but it is one that I'm in the middle of technically. Now we have a series which I really need to read and that is Truth Witch by Susan Dennard. This is a series that I originally read the first book of liked but because I moved around so much I ended up unhauling it because I didn't carry on with it and now I've recently got it back and I want to reread this and then continue on with the series. I think she's come out with her fourth one again last year, this year, I'm not, not sure. Um, and yeah this is one I really need to read. We're in a world where people have different abilities. In this one we're following a main character who has the power to know when people are lying which People want to use her for this skill so she's constantly on the run, constantly trying to hide it from everybody and gets into a bit of trouble. Again it's been a few years since I've read this so I could have that slightly wrong but I remember really liking it and there's a really good friendship in here and I do remember wanting to carry on but I just never did so this is one that I really am meaning to reread soon. Then we have another one which I'm in two minds whether I'm going to continue or not and that's Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan. I feel like for me this was like Shadow and Bone again. Leah Bardugo's Grishaverse Tree trilogy and honestly I didn't like that trilogy. I liked the first book that was four stars and then the second and third book I didn't enjoy and I feel like this is a rehash of that. Done differently but it is so similar. It's got the similar vibes, similar themes, similar tropes and I don't know if I want to carry on. I enjoyed it at the time but I gave it four stars the same as Shadow and Bone and I'm just a bit like... I'm not 100% about it. I'm really not. Like I am a little bit interested but not enough to actually buy the second book. Again this might be one that I either get from the library or listen to on audiobook and decide from there because at the minute I am really undecided about this one. Oh um, I didn't actually say what this is about. This is about a girl who can commune with gods. She is like one of the last of her kind that can do this. They are people that have been persecuted because we have a different race of people that don't want to be told what to do by the gods and stuff. They have made their own power 
are using blood magic and kind of goes on from there there's like this big war going on and our main character is meant to be able to save everyone because she can commune with the gods and is able to harness their magic she doesn't really harness it she kind of has to ask for it it's a weird it's a weird system i probably did a really terrible job with that one but moving on we have a trilogy which i have read the first two in and i really do want to continue and that is the broken earth trilogy by nk jemison i really enjoyed the fifth season and obelisk gate i think this book well this series is so well written i love her writing style it's a weird mash between sci-fi fantasy and dystopian so i feel like if you are a sci-fi reader that wants to get into fantasy or vice versa this is a really good one to do it because i feel like it does bridge that gap really well so i'm mainly a fantasy reader that doesn't read much sci-fi so this is a really good one for me to get into and actually i love the writing i love the concept we are based on earth where we have a fifth season which basically is where the world rips itself apart and you have everyone that has to try and survive it and then kind of move on almost like another ice age but instead of ice which technically it does happen eventually it's just the world ripping itself apart so it's like series of earthquakes and stuff and you have this whole world where literally they are so used to it they have this strict regime of how they deal with it and it talks about cannibalism and things like that what people have to do to survive something like this and we also have this different people who have kind of like earth magic but they are horribly oppressed you would think that considering they can help stem that and make it a little bit easier to survive the fifth season when it happens that they would be revered but they're not they are persecuted and it is a really dark book but i do think it's well done and yeah i recommend it if you're interested in either getting into sci-fi or fantasy this is a good one to start and i loved it i mean every single book won the hugo award which is the first time that's ever happened and i can say they definitely deserve it so yeah really excited to get that third one then we have a series i started last year and that is cinder by marissa meyer now this is a series of retellings which I really like but with a sci-fi twist and this one is a retelling of Cinderella and we have different like AI and things like that involved as well and we're based in Beijing and there is this virus that's been going around killing people which considering I read this last year that probably wasn't smart but I do like it I whenever I think about it I really do enjoy it I got more engrossed and enjoyed it more than what I thought plus these covers I love these editions they are beautiful now there's two reasons why I haven't continued on with it one because I haven't been in the mood and two because I really want to get the rest of the books in this and this is hard to find these covers because we have different covers in the UK and they just no I don't like those covers and also I'm undecided because I feel like it is a younger read so I've really got to be in the mood to read these books but I did enjoy this one and a lot of people do say that the next couple are their favourites and they are different retellings so I believe you've got Snow White, um, Sleeping Beauty and a few others that go with this so I feel like I do want to get this read. I do want to continue on with it but I also want to get the right the covers that go along with this so I don't know maybe eventually we'll see almost done i promise so then we have what i think is a duology and that is these witches don't burn by isabel sterling this was a really fun book this is a modern witches sapphic romance book and i did really enjoy this it's set in salem and we have a bit of a mystery going on because we have witches that are being persecuted and they're trying to work out why and there is a lot but I feel like it was a really fun read and I do want to get the second one. So I need to do that because I keep forgetting and I did actually really enjoy this. Again, it kind of feels like a YA murder mystery, but with witches, which I think is pretty cool. So yeah, I need to continue on with this one. Now we have another YA murder mystery and that is the Truly Devious series by Maureen Johnson. And she's come out with a fourth book recently as well, which I thought this was a trilogy. I was so baffled. And then I found it on Instagram and I was like, wait, what? So yeah, I really need to carry on with this one. I am actually reading the second book this month, meant to be this month, we'll see. Um, And yeah, I need to continue on with it. I did enjoy this one. I think it's a really interesting murder mystery. We have this overarching mystery where we have our main character that is going to this school. And this school is for children who are exceptional. They are allowed to learn what they want and at their own pace. And our main character is wanting to become a detective and she is resolute on trying to solve the mystery because at this school, a child died and they have no idea why, who did it, how they did it. There was this 
kidnappings and everything. There was so much that went on at this time and you get interesting parts because you get a little bit of that. So you'll get two timelines. You'll get the current timeline and then you'll get little snippets from the past. And we also have in each book its own mystery as well. So I do think it's good. I really need to carry on with it. Hopefully I enjoyed the second book and we will go from there. Okay, then we have another series which I'm undecided about and that is The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. Now I know loads of people have really enjoyed this, but again, it just felt like another version of like an ember in the ashes which i read first which is why i keep comparing them i don't know i'm really undecided thankfully i picked this one up for a pound it was really cheap but i just i don't know we're in this world where we have clairvoyance and to be a clairvoyant is punishable by death basically it goes on from there there are different versions of clairvoyance that can do different things and of course our main character is the special one so yeah i just feel like there was romance in this that didn't make sense there is a lot of brutality which again just seemed really pointless and it was basically an ember in the ashes very similar to that and i did not really enjoy ember in the ashes this one came out as three stars i feel like if you liked Ember in the Ashes you're probably gonna like this or if you like this you're probably gonna like Ember in the Ashes but it just for me didn't work and I'm really undecided whether I want to continue. My sisters enjoyed this series and there are lots of other people that have enjoyed this series but I am hesitant. Then we also have Bone Cries Moon by Catherine Purdy and this is another one which I'm not sure if I want to carry on. This is a duology so it wouldn't take much but again I just feel like it was a really tropey YA read that I have read before in so many other books and it was really hyped up at the time but I don't hear anyone talk about the second book and I don't hear anyone talk about this one anymore either. I just feel like this was a forgettable one to the point where I read this last year and I'm normally really good with remembering plots but I can't really remember what happens in this. It just wasn't one I was interested in paying attention to. I know it's about different almost like witches that have this magic over bones and if you collect animal bones you gain their attributes and stuff and the idea is that you're meant to call your soulmate and kill them to unlock your full potential which is just I don't know, it's weird. It's really weird. And the way it ended was just like, oh, it could have been so much better. So I really think this is probably gonna be one that I unhaul and don't continue because I just wasn't interested. Okay, and the very last one I wanna talk about is actually a graphic novel and that is Monstrous. And this is a really good graphic novel and I really enjoyed it. I've read the first two, I do wanna continue on, but like manga, it is expensive. And this is really interesting. It is a horror graphic novel. I think I need to reread this to be fair because it's been a little while and I'm a little bit hazy with the details, but it's got steampunk vibes, which I love. And there is this war going on between humans and kind of like these creatures and you have half breeds in between that kind of get stuck in this war. And the humans are experimenting on the half breeds and stuff to gain something from them to give the humans power. And it is a gruesome story. People are running away. We're trying to stop this war. There's a lot going on and I do think it is well done. But yeah, I need to properly reread this to get back into the details and then continue on with this series because I do think it's a good one and the artwork is amazing. I think it's really good. So yeah, this is one that I need to continue on with as well. Okay, that's it. This was a really long video to film and I'm hoping I can edit it a bit shorter for you guys because I do prefer doing like 20, 25 minute videos, but we'll see. Anyway, let me know what are some series that you've started that you really want to get to and carry on with, but just haven't for whatever reason. Do let me know, have you read any of these series? Are there any on here that I should be prioritizing reading? Because clearly I need a boost to get through some of these. But if you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it that thumbs up and subscribe. My social media links will be linked below and I will catch you in the next one. Mm -hmm.